Centuries ago, barbarians stole the sacred scarab of Osiris, causing a curse to plague these lands, and not letting the dead rest. Now, centuries later, the undead pharaoh was released and wants to destroy the world. Before he gets too powerful, some undead pirates freed the husks from our tomb, hoping that we can help stop him. Will I be able to find the sacred scarab? What memories from my past life will I uncover? And what hostiles will I face? Make sure to like, subscribe, and watch to the end to find out. Now, here's 100 days as a husk in hardcore Minecraft. Day 1. I left my tomb as the wither skeletons went inside and their leader approached. He hit me with a torch and it felt like I woke up from a bad dream. How is it seeing the sun for the first time in centuries? Centuries? How am I alive? Well, you aren't. You are undead. Oh, that would explain why we all look like husks. What's going on? Come with me. Your pharaoh is challenging my king's rule and attacking all the undead that don't serve him. How is he alive? He's not. Oh, right. <laughs> so why release us? And why did you hit me with that torch? Before he could answer, an arrow hit me out of nowhere. I turned around to see some weird looking skeletons coming our way. I turned back and ran into the wither skeleton who hit me with the torch again. I spun around dizzily and had a flashback to my past life. These rub skeletons used to be a part of the Assassin's Guild. Then I blacked out. When I came to, everyone was inside the tomb with the entrance blocked. Good. The torch seems to work well on you. Oh, uh, tell me what's going on. We need your help. I need the sacred scarab of Osiris. This is the torch of Osiris. It will help you remember your past life. I think the skeletons are gone now. I don't remember too much. Why do you need my memories? You will in time. Your pharaoh is growing too powerful. He has an army and uses weapons blessed by the desert deities. If he finds the scarab before we do, all is lost. Since you were alive back when the scarab was stolen, we are hoping the torch will help you remember where the scarab ended up. So what's the plan? I need to meet up with our arriving captain. You should gear up and explore these lands. See if anything else brings back memories. We'll find you again. Sounds good. And with that, they were off. So I went inside my old tomb, found some robes and a stick, and hit the rest of the husks with my magic torch. Then we all went our separate ways as we traveled into the night. The next morning, as I searched for food, a flying machine flew right toward me. I tried to run, but it cut me off and turned out to be this video sponsor, War Thunder, a free-to-play multiplayer game where you can rush into battle against other military ground vehicles, aircrafts, and naval vessels. Get the game on Mac, PC, Xbox, or PlayStation, and check out their new Fire and Ice update. All new drones and a whole new branch of finished vehicles have been added. My favorite part is using the new flamethrower added for the tanks and ships. The update includes more realistic visual and sound effects that make the explosions even more devastating. War Thunder offers a vast amount of vehicles from 10 different countries, dating from now all the way back to the start of last century. Depending on the map, you can fight for control of the ground while others try to dominate the skies or sink enemy ships. Every vehicle can be improved with devices, armor, special equipment, and even a better crew. Also, customize your ride with a wide variety of new skins and decorations. Then join battles all around the world and experience their realistic graphics and physics firsthand. For an even crazier experience, download fun skins and play custom games where you can race, play sports, and more. When you download War Thunder for free, the link in the description, new players, and those who haven't played in the past six months will receive 500,000 silver lions, three premium vehicles to keep forever, XP boosters, a week of premium account, and renting legendary German ground vehicles along with other bonuses too. Then they quickly flew off and I went back to my search. I spent days two and three chasing animals around for food. All I could find out here were rabbits and some quail, which are pretty much like chicken. I needed to find a village or an oasis if I were to get any plants to eat, but all I could find was this abandoned gatehouse, which is kind of like a guard outpost. As I went to loot it, I found statues inside, and when I got closer, the torch gave me another flashback. These statues used to be barbarians. I was jolted back to reality when the statues came alive and began to attack me. I ran for my life and quickly evaded those stone monsters. After that encounter, I needed a way to protect myself, so I stopped by a dried forest to get some wood. Then I collected some limestone to make myself a sharp stone sword along with some other tools. On day four, I continued my search for a village. I climbed this tower to get a bird's eye view of my surroundings and spotted some camels in the distance. I then took a leap of faith off the tower and into a pile of hay below. I made my way over to the camels and jumped on one, but quickly remembered I needed a saddle before wandering off. The next day, I explored some excavated tombs, probably dug out by those wither skeletons. In their haste, they missed a hidden section of the tombs. I freed the husks that were there, finding a saddle and a lead. I also disturbed a spider that was small but aggressive, so I swung my sword crazily around until it fell. Day 6, I went back to where I last saw those camels, but quickly hid when I saw those stone barbarians hunting them. This time, they had a bigger stone creature with them, and the torch gave me another flashback. I watched as the barbarians pillaged a town, attacking the villagers who lived there and killing any animals in their way. When I came to, the barbarians were gone, but they left the camel meat behind. I guess they only had an appetite for violence now. While I didn't have a ride yet, at least I had some more food, which I felt a little bad about eating. I spent the next two days traveling through somewhat familiar lands while hunting any food I could find. I also ran into a couple more skeletons. I ran around them, trying my best to dodge their arrows. I managed to defeat one, but took way too much damage, so I quickly ran away. And on the night of day eight, I found a husk playing with a cat. The torch threw me into the past, and I saw myself walking next to an old friend as we were followed by his cat. Then the husk slowly approached. Hello, do I know you? Hello again, friend. I see you have a new cat. Yeah.
yes, the cat deity Bastet still watches over us. Do you know what's going on? I need to find the sacred scarab before the evil pharaoh gets- Evil? My memory is foggy, but I thought he was a good king. What changed? I'm still trying to figure that out. Do you know where I could find a village? Follow me. We spent day nine traveling to his old village while catching up with each other. We arrived as the sun began to set and were greeted by the other husks. I fondly remembered running around this village with my friend when we were kids and letting his cat chase us with fish in hand. The husks there let me gather more of their crops for food and I stayed there for the night. The next day, my friend led me to an old mine shaft they used to use. I spent the next several days searching for enough iron to upgrade my tools and get some armor. But I found a spider den and they all swarmed me. I ran for my life until I came to a chasm. Without thinking, I jumped and landed into a pool below. The spiders followed me, but we're all slow in the water, so I was able to kill them off and get some string. Then I made a bow and gathered flint from the gravel around the pool. Now I just needed some feathers for arrows. I spent the rest of this time collecting the rest of the iron I needed to craft a full set of armor. And on my way out of the mine, I ran into a weird snake person who attacked me on sight. Thanks to my new armor, I was able to best him, but I did not remember ever running into those before. Day 14, I made it back to the village. One of the husks used to raise quail back when he was alive and managed to lure some wild quail back to the village, but he needed help restoring their enclosure. Once that was fixed, I helped him get his little friends into their new home. Then he thanked me with feathers, so I quickly made myself some arrows. Now it was time to move on and see what else was out there. On the night of day 15, I found a weird looking structure. As I went to explore it, a pile of bones came alive. This storm chased me out into the open, so I used my bow to shoot at it. This desert has become so much more dangerous since it's been cursed. The next day, I at least had a chance to rest at this dried up oasis that seemed to draw a few different animals to it. It's beautiful, isn't it? Who's there? Oh, this heat must be making me crazy. <laughs> Down here. Whoa, what are you? Just a frog enjoying what's left of this oasis. You know, this oasis, along with many others, used to be filled with life until these lands were cursed. Cursed? Is that why everything is dead and everyone is undead? Yep. Can you help me bring it back to life? We'll need a... Suddenly, the torch showed me a vision of me playing in a lush oasis. This time felt a bit different. I was able to control my past self and explore, and there was something glowing in the water. I swam my way over to it, and just as I was Hello? about to touch it... Hello? Huh, what? Your face glazed over for a second. So will you help me out or not? Yes. If I find what you speak of in my travels, I'll bring it back here. By then, a stray camel had wandered up, so I awkwardly tamed it as the frog watched. After a bit too long, I was finally venturing off on my new steed. After riding through the open desert, I found another gatehouse to explore. Luckily, this time there were no statues inside. I found some more arrows and some really stale bread. I also found some camel armor and some spare barrels for my camel to carry. Then I decided to camp there for the night. The next morning, a band of skeletons approached, so I hopped on my camel and rode it into battle. I shot the skeletons from afar, then slashed at them with my sword. I had a much better advantage this time. After the battle, I had a flashback of those assassins chasing a group of defenseless villagers as we ran toward a beautiful temple. I was just a kid back then, and luckily the assassins did not dare enter the temple. Then I realized my attackers came from the direction of the village, so I raced back toward there. When I got back, everyone seemed okay, but their homes were more destroyed than before. My friends said the skeleton assassins were looking for me specifically, so that's why they were spared. I helped my friend collect some limestone, and we worked together to repair the village. I couldn't stop wondering why the skeletons were after me though. I also planted some of my own crops to grow. Some husks woke me up on day 22 because more skeletons arrived at the village. I ran outside with sword in hand, relieved to see who it was. Oh good, it's just you. Hello again. We brought some supplies for your people. Thank you. Have you found out anything new? I've had a vision of a temple that seems important, and I think I know where it is. That's great news, but we must report back to our king, the Nameless One. Will you return? Yes, we will. But before we go, my captain needs a favor. Okay. His captain approached with an odd-looking staff and asked to take a bit of my essence so he could raise husks from the dead. After that, they left and went to check out a floating tower in the clouds that might have a big blue creature inside. I guess something the captain saw on the way here. As they left, I began journeying to find the temple. I spent day 23 traveling and passed that gatehouse where I faced those skeletons. That's where I envisioned the temple, so it must be close by. Early day 24, the temple came into view from a distance. I felt a sense of awe, as I remembered this is the Temple of Osiris. I cautiously entered, finding more statues lined up around the walls. I also found the item that the frog wanted, but if these used to be barbarians, why would they be here? Osiris's torch answered that question. All of a sudden, I was in the past again, and the barbarians ransacked the temple, fighting anyone in their way. Their leader stole the sacred scarab before pushing me out of the way and running out with some of his goons. When the vision ended, I was surrounded, and that giant camel-killing stone monster stood before me. I instinctively attacked him with my sword, but was quickly overwhelmed by the rest of the stone guards. I slew a couple of them before making my escape. I guess Osiris thought guarding his temple for eternity was a good punishment for those who pillaged it. But then, where did the barbarian leader bring the scarab? While traveling, Traveling back
back to the village, I found another stray husk. He sat sadly at the edge of a withered forest and said that his home was infested with spiders. I worked my way through the forest and fought off several annoying little spiders until I made it to what was left of his home. When I opened the door, the mother spider was right there. She was huge and very angry with me. <laughs> Luckily, she couldn't get between the trees and I defeated her with my bow. The husk excitedly ran into his home and grabbed an old script. Then the torch of Osiris grew warm. All of a sudden, I was a little kid again, watching a play put on by a man with that same script. But the play was interrupted by bandits. I got scared, so I hid. Well, once the vision ended, I invited the husk to return to the village with me. We arrived to the village to find it was overrun by mummies. I rode into battle to protect the village, slashing at as many as I could. Then I dismounted and shot at their remaining forces. Once the village was clear, I got my friend to help me gather the materials needed to build up some defenses. And by the end of day 29, the village had a strong wall to protect it from any more attacks. The next day, I went to check on my crops and they didn't seem to grow all that well. That's when I remembered I needed to bring that frog the glowing item I found. But when I arrived to the dead oasis, a crocodile began snapping at my feet until a giant frog came out of nowhere and killed it. I went to get my camel that ran away and returned to find a woman standing there. It's time you know what's going on. Uh, okay. What are you? I am Hecate, the desert deity of agriculture. All the desert deities have been watching your progress. We think you can lift the curse by finding and returning the scarab of Osiris to his temple. And why can't one of you just do it? It was man that caused the curse, so man must lift it. We are forbidden to directly interfere, but can offer help or harm. Harm? The evil desert deities like the curse. The barbarians and bandits are followers of Set, the deity of chaos. The assassins follow Anubis, the deity of death, and they all seem to support the pharaoh. And if you run into any crocodiles, tarantulas, or snakes, they would be sent by Amit, Neith, and the Heb Cow. <laughs> Whoa, can you explain it a little more simply, please? <laughs> if anything attacks you, they're sent by evil spirits and work for the pharaoh. Will any desert deities help me? Yes. Our leader Osiris has been showing you visions of your past life with his torch. Basthead, the cat deity, is watching over your people. And Isis and Ra will help me assist you, I'm sure. Okay, here's what you asked for. Do you happen to know where the barbarian's hideout used to be? Hecate didn't seem to hear me as she excitedly took the glowing block and placed it down. Before I could re-ask, the torch took over, and I watched myself chase the barbarians through the desert as they ran towards some mountains. When I came to, I thought I was in a new place, but actually, the oasis was restored to its former glory. Before I left, Hecate gave me some buckets of water for the village and pointed me toward the mountains. Day 31, I found the mountains and walked through a familiar valley. Again, the torch took control. The barbarians tried to escape to these mountains, but I found they had been turned to stone, and the scarab was on the ground. As I made my way over, the leader of the assassins picked it up and left me to fight two of his followers. I fought them off and continued my pursuit. He awaited me, now ready for a fight. He was much faster and stronger. I tried to run up the mountainside, but the loose rocks gave way. I awoke to find the assassin leader had his legs cracked under a fallen rock, but he didn't have the scarab on him. He must have passed it on to his other followers. I abruptly took damage, shaking me out of the vision. A strange ghost-like creature had appeared and began attacking me. With the hood and no legs, I figured it was the old assassin leader wanting revenge, so I took off. I began journeying back to the village, but stopped at the oasis to ask for food. I'm sorry, I don't have much to offer. If you bring me seeds, my frogs will plant them for you here. Okay, do you know where I could find more? There is a mine shaft not too far from here. They are known for having seeds stored amongst other precious items. Thank you. Before I could go much further, I had to hunt some animals that were drawn to the oasis for food. Then I found the mine shaft and found all sorts of seeds amongst other supplies before returning to the oasis to give Hecate the seeds. Day 36, I headed toward the village, taking a detour to avoid a band of stone barbarians. I stumbled upon a dried up river and a little hut that I remembered was used as a messenger post. The only message still intact said the pharaoh had been overthrown since the scarab was stolen. So that means this evil pharaoh who's causing all this chaos is someone new, but who could it be? I made it back the next day and used the oasis water to make a well. Next, I helped the husks irrigate their farms so they could grow more crops. The water really helped to revitalize the land. I spent days 38 through 40 scouring the lands for any gatehouses and searching for weapons, or at least the materials to craft them. The husks were just defenseless villagers in their past lives, so I wanted to arm them and give them a fighting chance against the pharaoh's forces. In one gatehouse, I found a set of gold armor, but before I could grab it, the torch activated. I saw my past self as an old man in gold armor, overseeing some villagers that were mining lots of sandstone, but I couldn't remember what that build was for. After the vision, I donned my newfound armor and brought the weapons back to the village. It was good timing too, because on day 41, the old assassin leader showed up with a huge band of skeletons. The husks fought bravely by my side to protect their home while I faced off against my old enemy. He was relentless and could take a lot of hits. Was I just fighting a ghost? Could I even win? I backed away as the assassin leader slowly approached. Suddenly my friend came out of nowhere and slew the ghost with a special looking weapon. Are you okay? <laughs> Thanks to you I am. Where did you get that? In an old tomb. While you were off finding normal weapons, I looked for weapons blessed by the desert deities. That's what the pharaoh uses. They're some of the most powerful in the land and the scarab was the strongest of them all. I think it's all still coming back to me. What does the scarab do exactly? It gives its user the ability to turn into a hulking monster 
capable of mass destruction. Whoa, I last remembered the assassins running off with it in the past. Weren't the assassins actually the skeletons we just defeated? Yes, and if they don't have it anymore, they must have passed it on to someone else. Who would they have given it to? I don't know, but I want you to take me to where you found that weapon. We spent the next several days journeying to the tomb in hopes to find any more special weapons and hopefully find the scarab too. We both went on foot and his cat tagged along also. But when we arrived, there wasn't much at first glance. The only valuable thing I found was another saddle, but my friend found a secret passageway that led down into a giant cave. We spied on a large group of snake people that seemed to live down here. That was until they surprised and captured us. The cat managed to escape though, and before the snake people could sacrifice us, the whole cave began to shake. So we made a run for it. We regrouped with the cat before the tunnel caved in, and best that seemed to be watching over us. After that scary encounter, we headed for the oasis. The following day was spent harvesting and replanting all the crops there. Once we finished that, we spent a long time trying to lure some sheep that were drawn to the oasis all the way back to the village. And when we finally made it back, we made an enclosure for them. Day 49, with very little luck finding any blessed weapons so far, I decided to head out in a new direction. I found another village not too far away, but this one was overrun by mummies. They all rushed me as I ran back toward my camel. But then, a green-robed husk appeared and led me inside. We hid in a secret hatch underground. Once safe, the torch gave me another flashback. The bandits had conquered a village and were searching for someone, but this time I was grown up and ready to fight. Until a green robe lady whisked me away into hiding. Then a shattering noise threw me out of my vision. The lady that saved me also healed me. Then we escaped out of a tunnel and fled. The next day, we traveled back to the village on foot. That gave her plenty of time to tell me about the bandit warlord, ruler of all the bandits, who are now mummies. This power-hungry tyrant would often hire out the assassins and the barbarians to do his bidding, so he must have got them to steal the scarab. If that's true, he must have been the one to also overthrow the old true pharaoh of the land. Everything was starting to make sense now, but if the bandit warlord never got the scarab from the assassins, then who did? When we made it back the night of day 51, my friend excitedly came out to meet us. It turns out he was actually married to the green-robed lady. It was nice to reunite them. Day 52, I continued my search for any clues to help me find a blessed weapon, and in my haste, I disturbed a pack of wolves. They began chasing me and slowly closing in. My camel was in a panic as we rode through the sand dunes. Suddenly, a piercing howl echoed through the winds, causing everyone to slam to a halt. The alpha of the pack slowly approached, and Osiris thought this was a good time for a flashback. Everything was moving fast and shaky at first. As my view cleared, I realized I was riding on the back of a wolf. Now that is an awesome pet. When I came to, it was just me and the alpha. I remembered what I had to do. We circled each other until he pounced. I met him with a few jabs and then jumped on his back. Once he was tamed, I put that saddle on him I found the other day. Then we stopped the other wolves from eating my camel, and I led it home to safety. After a couple more days of searching, I found another tomb. The sunlight shined through the ceiling right on a chest, and as I drew near it, the torch grew warm again. I watched a barbarian trying to loot it, but failing miserably as he burst into flame and ran out. I made sure to avoid those traps as I got closer. Inside the chest was a ring blessed by Ra and armor for my wolf. Hecate was right about Ra helping me out, but how would a little ring be useful? As I traveled back to the village, I was swarmed by more of those bone storms. I held out the ring, but nothing happened, so I quickly switched my bow and tried to dodge their attacks as I shot them all down. I guess the ring is not so useful, but I'll at least wear it for now. If I was going to fight the bandit warlord and his army, I needed something actually useful. I needed better armor. So I spent days 56 through 60 searching for diamonds. I spent the first few on a new pickaxe though, and by day 61, I found the last of the diamonds I needed. But I also found a strange cavern with an altar across the lava lake. Suddenly, I saw the cavern light up, and watched myself walking across a bridge with some other villagers to bring offerings to the altar. When I snapped back to the present, the bridge was gone. Then, the ring began pulling me toward the altar and right toward the lava. I couldn't fight it, I couldn't look, but the lava felt cold? <laughs> the ring allowed me to walk on lava? I ran around as the lava changed below my feet. Then, I went right up to the altar where the chest stood. Inside, I found a sword, shield, and bow that were blessed by the desert deities. I excitedly crafted my diamond armor and left the altar behind, now ready to face anything. On day 62, I returned to the village to find the happy couple waiting for me. Hello, we want to find some more husks to bring back here. That sounds like a good idea. You can take my camel. We'll need more than one. We know where we can get more saddles. What's the problem? The stable? Is that the village that was swarming with mummies? I'll see what I can do. I hopped on my wolf and rode there as fast as I could. Upon arrival, I saw the mummies were still there, but my wolf did not want to be stealthy. We rode through the village, hacking everyone out of our way. I jumped off, grabbed the saddles, and we rode off as quickly as we arrived. And the husks had already gathered some more camels by the time I got home. The next day, the couple rode off with their camels in search of any lost husks. But soon after they left, the mummies I riled up attacked the town. They followed me here and broke through one of the gates. Fortunately, this time, the husks were prepared. We were outnumbered, but I led the charge using my new gear to protect the villagers. As we finished patching up the gate, someone spotted a second wave incoming. There was no place for us to fall back to. I had the husks take aim on the wall while I quickly built outside. And when the mummies showed up, they all funneled into my trap so I didn't have to fight so many at once. And by nightfall, we exhaustedly claimed victory. After that, the villagers decided they wanted to build a citadel. Basically, a 
giant fortress to retreat to in case they are ever overwhelmed again. So we spent the next several days collecting the resources to build it. I felt a little faint from the heat, so I sat down to rest and the torch activated. I was an old man again, leading the villagers through the desert after collecting plenty of sandstone. I shook the vision from my mind as the husks all began freaking out. They accidentally mined into a scarab hive. I rushed to the rescue and crushed all those little bugs. Now I had some extra food, but it will definitely be a last resort. It actually felt natural leading the building force in creating this grand structure. And now we had a safe haven to retreat to if we're ever attacked. On day 70, the couple returned with several more husks and we let them all stay in the citadel. Next, I had to get some more food, anything to avoid resorting to eating those scarabs. I did not see Hecate anywhere at the oasis though, so I gathered some food and camped there for the night. Time to rise and shine. <sighs> what? Oh, it's just you. I'm glad you're here. Amit has sent her forces to take over another oasis that I just revitalized. Can you deal with them? Sure thing. Which way is it? She showed me the way and I rode off, trying to remember who Amit was. I quickly remembered who Amit was when I arrived to the oasis to see it swarming with crocodiles. I began shooting at them from afar and drew them in. Then I met them head on as they all snapped at my feet. It looked clear now, but as I made my way through the brush, I found a giant albino crocodile. I quickly launched a few arrows towards it, but that just made it angry. So I tried to evade it the best I could, dealing any damage possible without letting it bite me. Once this huge crocodile fell, the sky cleared up. The oasis was free again. I returned to the original oasis, but Hecate was gone. She left me some natural resources and a note saying Isis, Osiris's wife, will reward me for my help if I follow the arrow. I figured I might as well and traveled until I found some temple ruins. As I entered, I was swarmed with scarabs. They were really more gross than life-threatening. Then I made my way to the altar where I found a necklace and a golden scarab. The torch gave me a flashback of when I was a child. People roamed around eating golden scarabs, so I placed the normal one on the altar. Suddenly, I was back in the ruined temple, golden scarab and necklace in hand, and all the scarabs I collected had been transformed into gold, so these must not be the sacred scarab. As I put the necklace on, I felt a warmth as my health slowly recovered. I also tried a golden scarab on my way out, and it wasn't too bad. Day 76, I returned to the village to find it had been attacked by more mummies. Fortunately, the husks were able to defend it. I gave some golden scarabs to my friends to pass out to those in need. Then I got to work, fixing up the village and adding those resources from Hecate around the village. The other husks gave me leftover bone meal to use from the assassin attack, and now the village really felt full of life. As I looked over the finished village, the torch of Osiris grew warm. I was an old man again, and we were celebrating a finished pyramid we built by huge mountains. Then I was shocked to see the bandit warlord approach. I noticed he did not have the sacred scarab. He looked really old too, and I felt a lot of resentment about being forced to serve him after he overthrew the pharaoh. The next morning, I left the citadel and began asking around if anyone knew about the location of the sacred scarab. After not finding any leads, I began traveling back to the temple of Osiris. I had a dangerous idea to hopefully get another clue. I approached the temple the next night and was greeted by the leader of the stone barbarians. He really had it out for me. We began battling it out, but he was a formidable foe. I ran away and as he chased me, my wolf tripped him. Now for my plan. I quickly hit him with the torch of Osiris and we were both thrown into a flashback. I watched as the bandit warlord plotted to overthrow the pharaoh with the leader of the assassins and the leader of the barbarians. And they planned to capture the pharaoh's son. The vision ended and more guards were approaching. So I quickly left before their leader woke up. Over the next two days, I journeyed back to the village and was surprised with a feast to honor all I had done for them. As I sat amongst the crowd, I had a vision of a similar feast, except this time I was a child and I was playing with another kid. We chased each other around with toy swords as the pharaoh and another king spoke of a recent attack on their lives. The pharaoh contemplated what to do to keep his son safe and the other boy looked very concerned. After that, I excused myself from the feast and pondered what happened to the pharaoh's son. The next day, I helped my friend tend to the crops and asked him about it. You must be imagining things. We were just orphaned farmers. You would not have been allowed to go to that feast, let alone play with the pharaoh's son. It all seems so real though. I do remember hearing about that attack. I think they put the prince into hiding. If we can find the undead prince, he might be able to help us defeat the bandit warlord and his mummy army. Didn't you figure out the pyramid was near the mountains? Yeah, why? I just remembered. When the bandit warlord became the new evil pharaoh, he forced everyone to build that pyramid. The prince could have been there too. You're right. Maybe I'll get another vision if I go up in the mountains. As I prepared to leave the next morning, the wither skeletons approached. Hello. Sorry we took so long. We couldn't find that floating tower. And we had to track down some pirates who were causing mischief. That's okay. I've made a lot of progress since we last met. The evil pharaoh is actually just a bandit warlord who usurped the throne. And I know exactly where his base is. Well, at least that it's in the mountains. Are you headed there now? We can join you. We're all the captain could spare. But we can put up a good fight. Of course. I'll cut you up on the way. We borrowed some camels and began the journey to the mountains. They definitely weren't used to riding animals. On day 85, we explored the mountains and the torch sparked out a vision. I was chasing the other assassins after trapping their leader under the rocks. They could not outrun me, so they turned to fight. I dodged their arrows, quickly defeated them, and picked up the sacred scarab. Then, all of a sudden, I was burying it in the mountains? That means we must be close. I led the group to where I remembered burying it, but when we arrived, it had already been dug up. Then the torch flared. This time, I was an old man. 
digging up the scarab after much time had passed. Then I hobbled away, presumably toward the pyramid. Was this it? Did I give up the scarab to the bandit warlord? We traveled in the direction I went as an old man, and on day 86, we finally found the pyramid, and it was swarming with mummies. The torch ignited, and I was deep below the pyramid. My old self used special torches to open a chamber where a sarcophagus rested. This was the secret tomb of the old pharaoh. I watched myself pull out the sacred scarab and place it in the tomb before falling over, and as I breathed my final breaths, my friends came in to take me away. Oh. Are you okay? The sacred scarab is in the tomb below the pyramid. Then we'll need an army to get to it. We'll need special torches too, made from the same ore used to craft the scarab. Come with us, to our ships. We can get reinforcements from our kingdom, but it'll be a long trip. I need to figure out who the pharaoh's son is. We'll need all the help we can get. I think the nameless one was alive back then. Maybe he knows something. We spent the next two days traveling to the wither skeleton ships. I was worried about leaving the husks undefended for so long, but as we approached the ships, the torch brimmed with energy. I was a young boy again, standing next to the pharaoh as that other king from before came off his ship. I then realized I was the pharaoh's son, and the other king must be the nameless one. As one of the guards removed his hood, I also realized this was the attack the king spoke of at the feast. The real guards fought off the barbarians and the assassins hired by the bandit warlord to kidnap me, and the pharaoh told me to go with the nameless one as he pulled out the sacred scarab. Had another vision? Yes, I'm the pharaoh's son, the rightful heir to the throne, and I just got a new idea to take it back. We traveled back to the mountains and searched through a mineshaft there until we found the special nebu ore we needed. Of course it couldn't have been that easy. We were swarmed with more spiders than I ever wanted to see. After that ordeal, I mined some coal, smelted the ore, and used the nebu to create the magic torches. On day 91, we returned to the pyramid. I had the wither skeleton stay up on the cliffside while I snuck down. I grabbed one of the mummies and pulled him into hiding. With his wrappings on, I could walk right through the rest of the horde and up to the pyramid. I had to be careful not to raise suspicion, but it was really hard to see where I was going. When I entered the throne room, I saw the bandit warlord sitting there, and he watched me as I went by. I snuck my way into the lower chambers and put back on my armor. There were only a few random mummies down here, and they were pretty easy to handle. Soon, I made it to the place I envisioned and placed the torches to open the door. Everything looked just how I left it. I went up to the sarcophagus and opened it, finding the sacred scarab. This whole time they searched for it, it was right under their noses. But as I left the tomb, several mummies were waiting for me. The bandit warlord must have suspected something. I raced back to the throne room to face him and was locked in. I quickly fought off all of his guards, and then he threw his staff at me, which flew back to his hand. I returned fire with my bow, but then he began launching poisonous arrows at me. I quickly ran to hide, and as my health was running out, I pulled out the scarab. I felt a surge of energy course through me as I grew. Now, I was ready to fight. I threw blocks of sand at my enemy while his puny arrows hit me. Then I got close to him and he pulled out a purple sword. He tried his best to fend me off, but I crushed him with a powerful smash. I could see now why they wanted to steal this from the pharaoh before they tried to take his throne. After the defeat of their leader, all the mummies outside rushed me and I had a fun time smashing everything in my path. I shrunk down to a normal husk again and went up to the wither skeletons, now wearing the robes of the pharaoh. The sacred scarab is truly the most powerful artifact in this desert. You will be a powerful ruler and ally. Until the scarab is returned to its temple, a curse will continue to plague these lands. Can you check on my people while I return it? Of course. We must return these camels anyway. Thank you. I traveled alone to the temple of Osiris, and the stone barbarians watched as I drew near. I calmly walked past them with the scarab in hand. They watched as I placed the torch and the scarab on the altar. Suddenly, Osiris engulfed the altar in flames, destroying both artifacts. Then granted me one last vision. My parents stood before me and said, well done. Osiris also let me keep the ability to turn into a hulking monster at will, and it seemed the curse was now lifted, as all the barbarians had turned to dust. Curious what happened to my people, I quickly returned to the village and found the husks still alive. Osiris allowed everyone to remain undead if they wanted to. Well, we better be off. Good luck with your new kingdom. Yes, I'm finally a ruler of a time long past. I don't suppose you'd be willing to join our ranks then. We could use someone like you. I think it's time to start a new journey and let the past remain buried. Well, say your goodbyes and invite whoever you want. We brought a lot of ships with us to aid in the search of those drowned pirates. I gathered the husks that wanted to leave and said my goodbyes. Are you sure you don't want to come with us? Not right now. We still have more husks to find out there. Here, we brought you two camels to take with you. I'm glad your father put you into hiding with me, and I hope we do cross paths again. I'm sure we will. Thank you. And with that, we went to set sail toward the Nameless One's kingdom. On day 100, we arrived at a jungle dock and met the shipmaster and his crew who built all these ships, along with the stray prince and his frozen crew. Also, these illagers and bee people that were getting ready to sail off somewhere. And finally, I met the Nameless One, who looked a lot different from the last time we met, <laughs> but I guess I did too. And that's why I survived 100 days as a husk in hardcore Minecraft. Special thanks to Dr. Duke, Asian Half Squat, and Super McGregs for helping me make this video, to my patrons for supporting the channel, and to you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Thanks again for watching.